Demography is the study of population change. It concerns all of us. What does it mean? In the first place, think about yourself. At this micro level, population change takes place every time there's a key event in our life. From birth to death, from leaving the parental home to migration. Second, think about your city, your region, country, or entities like the European Union, or even about the whole world. At this macro level, demography concerns the size of populations, their structure by age, their composition by gender, and the potential for people to support each other. For this reason, demography shapes and is shaped by economic, social, political, and environmental change. So, Talking about the future of our world, demography is for sure a central issue. Why is that the case? Before exploring the why, we need to understand some of the key features of demography. Population change can be slow or fast, according to different phenomena. The French demographer of Presovy used the metaphor of a watch to describe the speed of demography. Differently from politics and the economy, which move with the fast hands of seconds and minutes, demography moves slowly with a higher hand. Yet, the short hand of the watch is the most important, even if it seems immobile. This underlying slowness of demography is a feature linked to two fundamental ideas that help us understand why demography is so relevant for our future. The demographic transition and population aging. The demographic transition is a process that leads populations from high and fluctuating mortality, together with high fertility, to low mortality and low fertility. This transition has been or is being experienced by the global population, as well by each country population. It is generally seen as a process that will be completed during the 21st century, for all countries of the world. Mortality decline kickstarts the demographic transition, with a subsequent decline in fertility and a significant population growth. The demographic transition is the reason why the world is much more populated now than ever before. Not only the size of population changes, also the age structure of populations become different as a consequence of the demographic transition. The age structures of populations change over time, both at the global and at the country level. As humans have become able to improve their lifestyle by taking care of their health and fertility, children become a smaller share of the population. After the transition starts, young people and adults become the largest part of the population. A demographic window of opportunity for economic growth opens in societies in which a large number of young and middle-aged adults prevail. These windows of opportunity create the potential for the so-called demographic dividend, a situation in which the economy develops thanks to a large share of individuals in productive ages. The opening and closing of these demographic windows of opportunities are predictable over decades. These many adults will grow older and the share of the elderly will become significant. Population aging emerges in the last stage of the transition with the rise of older adults. For this reason, population aging is bound to become a global phenomenon. Given that population change is low, we can predict with confidence population scenarios that span over a number of decades. This is what actually happens with the United Nations population division, 
with a biannual series of population prospects, also with Eurostats for the European Union, and a number of national level official agencies predicting the future of population change even 80 years ahead, until the year 2100. In this sense, population change is a mega trend that drives global and local trends in a number of domains. As a result, demographic scenarios have been used as input for scenarios on the future of the economy, political and social change, democratization, political identity, religiosity and culture, education, and even climate change. We have so far talked about the slowness of demography, but still, it would be wrong to think that population change happens only in a slow, smooth, and predictable way. There are several instances in which demography is fast and therefore becomes less predictable and potentially discontinuous. In these cases, politics, the economy and the broad environment, including pathogens, can cause sudden demographic shifts. When thinking about the future, it is very important to take the potential for fast change into account. Since Maltos first noted this, recession and economic booms have quickly affected births. Technological change in agriculture, medical discoveries, but also the recent digital revolution have also quickly shaped population change. Last but not least, pandemics are still around, with COVID-19 having compressed deaths in a short time compared to other epidemics of the post-transitional world. However, the main force driving fast population change is migration. At the scale of a country, of a region, of a city, migration tends to drive fast population change. As a rule of thumb, the smallest the population, the most important the role of migration is. When thinking about the future at a scale that is less than global, Migration magnifies the uncertainty associated with population change. Political decisions are crucial in shaping fast population change. It is interesting to consider the case of Germany. With more than 83 million inhabitants in 2020, Germany is the most populated country among those in the top 10 of the Human Development Index, an indicator that includes economic well-being, or income per capita, demography through the length of life, and education. After German reunification, East Germany was significantly impacted through the fall of the fertility and out-migration. Later on, the German policy on migrants and refugees shifted. During the 2015 refugee crisis, the first prudent Chancellor Merkel famously stated, we cannot close the borders, and our refugee law has no upper limit. These political decisions, together with new family-friendly policies, have quickly changed the shape and size of German demography. Many factors are shaping demography. Some are predictable, operate slowly, and tend to drive social and economic dynamics. Others are less predictable, and especially at a smaller geographical scale, they operate quickly and swiftly, changing populations. We have the great privilege to host the Vice President of the European Commission, Dubravka Schwitzer. Commissioner for Democracy and Demography. Vice President, what do you see as the most important slow and fast demographic challenges for the European Union? I would like to emphasize that my view on demographic change is not only one of challenges. Change also offers opportunities that we must grasp. For both slow and fast demographic change, we should not limit ourselves to problem analysis, 
but think about solutions and ideas of how to make the most of any situation. This is what guides our efforts in the European Commission and what drives me in my work. One of the most important slow changes in the European Union clearly is population aging. Our median age has been increasingly over the past decades and given the dynamics in birth rates, life expectancy and migration, the median age is projected to go up by another 5 years to 48.8 years until 2070. The share of older people in the population will increase. This has significant impact on labor markets, the demand for healthcare and long-term care services, also to our pension systems and our sustainability of public finances, but also on social cohesion. At the same time, the aging process also offers new avenues for social and economic development and also challenges our perceptions of aging be it with regard to the social and economic contribution and participation by older people, the growth and innovation potential of the silver economy, or intergenerational learning. But of course, we also face fast demographic change. Perhaps the most significant ones are depopulation and brain drain in specific parts of the Union. Some regions will face sharp population decline with high out-migration and low birth rates, while others will experience steady population growth. However, we don't look at this as an issue of sending regions against receiving regions or brain drain versus brain gain. Instead, we should promote brain circulation, where movement from one place to another can produce both individual and collective benefits. Movement within the European Union is not a one-way street. Regional responses to demographic change must include multiple interventions and integrated approaches. Both rapid growth and rapid decline should lead to adjustment of public services and infrastructure to match the needs. And both are closely linked to our ambition of achieving a green and climate-neutral economy. Therefore, all public policies need to take account of slow and fast demographic trends. At European level, the European Commission is working together with Member States on concrete initiatives to respond and to anticipate those changes. So, we have seen that population change can be slow, but it can also be fast. Addressing the challenges and grasping the opportunities of demography requires that we acknowledge this double speed. The slow nature of population change is a challenge for policymakers and business leaders alike, as their planning horizon they usually face is relatively short, and therefore foresight is needed to build societies, economies and businesses that can ride on the waves of demographic change. At the global level, and relatively slowly, the demographic transition and population aging are predictable processes that will unavoidably transform economies and societies everywhere. Europe and East Asia are the first regions in the world that face high levels of population aging. Coming first comes indeed as a challenge but it can also become an opportunity. The forerunners of population aging, when addressing it, can develop innovative solutions, both in terms of policies and through market-provided services. Examples include solutions to help prevent infertility from falling to extreme low levels, including through promoting work-family balance, or solutions to take care of the needs for frail individuals, including some of the elderly. These innovative solutions will then potentially become scalable to other societies. Think about China, for instance. They will also experience population aging. At the country, region and city level, demography can change in a fast way. 
The most important factors that can change the size and shape of populations in a short time are immigration and out-migration. This fast nature implies that policies can change the course of demography, which is then not exogenously given, for policymakers in particular. If this is possible, population scenarios at the country or lower level that span over decades have to be considered as points of reference rather than as actual forecasts. In conclusion, we have seen that population change is a fundamental driver of our future. As individuals, communities, societies and businesses, we need to understand the basics of demography but also to collect population data over timescales that are increasingly higher. Knowing more than just the basics of demography, given its centrality, will become a source of comparative advantage.